Rivers. You know, he's he's ready to step up whenever his name's called, and uh, we believe in him highly. So, you know, we didn't we weren't surprised when he went out there and you know did what he did. But uh, we're just glad and just happy for him. Um, after one of the threes, I felt really good about it. Um, and then coach ran the same play back to back and another one dropped. So, um, I knew at that point I was feeling it and these guys do a good job in the huddle saying to keep looking for me and the coaches preach that as well. So, Adam, what did you see out of tonight? Uh, confident, you know, he's a killer at the end of the day and, uh, we believe in him highly and, uh, you know, we just want to do our best whenever anybody's hot to feed him. So, uh. I feel like we can continue to, you know, grow on that and continue to find more shots because, you know, everybody saw it out there. He was feeling it. So they they switched all five. Did that? Did you guys anticipate? I'm sure you didn't anticipate that they would do that. And did it at all change your offensive approach after you saw that? Uh, it definitely was an adjustment. You know, we uh, didn't anticipate that they would go to it right away. But, uh, you know, we have a, a group of guys that are ready to adapt and adjust to any situation. And uh, we just wanted to go out and try to get the best shots we could out there. Were you trying to hunt different matchups at all? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, there's always, um, you know, at the end of the day, Kansas is an elite defensive team. So anytime we can get an opportunity where we feel like we have an advantage, we want to try to attack that. So. What's kind of the feeling on this team? You have won five in a row. You have won in different ways. What's kind of the feeling? Um, I mean, it feels good, but we're not trying to be too satisfied over this win. Uh, we knew if we had to protect home court. We haven't done that so far this year, so we preached that in um, film and practice. So um, it feels good to protect home court. Adam, how do you feel like you all were able to secure so many offensive rebounds tonight? Uh, just energy and effort. You know, we felt like at the end of the day, the toughest team's going to win this game. And uh, we pride ourselves on that. So we wanted to go out there and be the toughest team. And uh, credit to Jalen, Flo, all of those guys, even uh, us guards trying to come back and help. Uh, it was huge for us, and it, it made a big difference in the game. For, for most of Scott's tenure, Kansas was winning the league every single year. Um, for the last four years, you guys are uh, four and three against them. I think we've been here for all of those. No, it's been quite the first year. But does it, do you feel like you're on their level? And what's it like when Kansas is on the schedule on that, you know, that night? Uh, I just want to give God the you know glory for the platform that he's given us. Um, we continue to work uh, really hard. And uh, Coach Drew's believed in us. He continue to put us in situations where we can thrive. So we're thankful to be in this situation and uh, continue to compete at a high level and, and win every game we try to go out there. So. Uh, so it's all about camaraderie at the end of the day. Uh, as long as we're locked in and we're connected out there, I know that we can defend at a high level. And a lot of um, people think that's our neck. But, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, once we're communicating and flying around, we know we can get the job done. Adam kind of touched on it, but for Jalen, to continue doing what he was doing the last couple of games, how big is that? Uh, it's huge for us. Um, he's a big piece to this team. And, um, in order for us to go far, we feel like he has to be um, playing his best basketball as well as us. So, um, I mean, I'm proud of him at the end of the day. He goes out there playing, he, and he plays hard no matter if he's making shots or not. So, um, now he's making shots. Uh, he's doing the little things still. So, um, he's playing really well. Um, I don't even remember him taking the lead, honestly. Yeah, they, they hit a three-pointer to go up 46-45. Oh, well. And then Langston, I think that was part of Langston. He had the three-point score. Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that's huge for us. Um, it just shows that when adversity hits, uh, we're able to fight through it. And uh, we've had games um, this season where adversity hits, and, I mean, we didn't fight, fight back. So um, doing that today was big for us. LJ, late in the game, you were able to draw a foul on a two-point jumper and get to the line. Kind of what are you looking for in those situations when you're deciding whether to take a step back three when you've been that effective all night or get to the hoop? Um, I just read the big. At that point, um, I knew my man was behind me. 
So um, the big was dropping back, so I was just eating up his space. And I felt Dewan on my back, and he was touching me. So I knew if I went up right then and there, I would get the call. So um, that was my progression throughout that play. And Adam, you might remember this play, but KU tried to run a lob on you. And as CJ mentioned in the history, KU's had some lobs on Baylor in the past. Langston was able to deflect it. What went well on that play for Langston to kind of sniff it out early and stop that KU lob in the first half? Uh, that's just credit to the coaching staff at the end of the day. Um, you know, going through scout and, and being, you know, holding everybody accountable at the end of the day to pay attention and understand because they're high uh, on, you know, when they come out of timeouts or media, whatever it may be, they're, they're looking for a big time play and a oop like that. So uh, credit to Langston, credit to the guys for communicating out there, and uh, he got the job done. So. Adam, with Kansas playing without a real big, did you have a bigger emphasis going into the lane and getting to the rim? Uh, we, we knew it was going to be a tough game, and uh, whoever can get the most pain points, we believe, at the end of the day is going to be able to win the game. So we just wanted to be the toughest team out there and, and rebound and attack the glass and just try to get the rim as much as we could. Uh, it was huge for us. Um, it got real loud in there, so hopefully it rattled the other team. I don't know um, the effect it had as far as that, but, I mean, I felt juiced up from having um, the crowd that energized. So. Uh, we need that this Saturday. Well, it's it's always an honor and privilege uh, being uh, on Big Monday. Uh, and the longer you coach, the more appreciation you have for opponents. And I mean, you look at uh, the last three years, us in Kansas, the winningest Power Five programs in the country, and uh, last two national championships. And when you beat them, you have to beat them. Uh, they're not going to beat themselves and uh, really proud of our guys. I mean, we shot 28% second half and found a way to win. Uh, really proud of how we competed on the glass, how we took care of the basketball. Um, we got a culture of joy and when things get tough, uh, uh, Adam, uh, Flo and John do a great job making sure everyone uh, uh, stays together uh, and controls what they can control and competes. and. Uh, blessed to coach uh, uh, guys that uh, care like that. Obviously, when we were 0-3, um, people want to know what changed. I mean, it was two one-possession games, so it wasn't like we were terrible. But uh, uh, credit the, uh, the upperclassmen for doing a great job. And um, I thank God every night when we don't have any injuries because we've had a nice string where we haven't had anyone out. And it's a blessing when you can practice and get better and when you can have some consistency. Yeah, I'm really excited for him. Uh, he's worked really hard. Everyone knows him. He's a really hard worker. But, I mean, they think he's his second year in college, but he tore the ACL and didn't have any – I mean, it was in October. Rehabbed, recovered, didn't get cleared for contact till September, October. So he's behind all the freshmen coming in because he didn't even have the summer. So uh, I know uh, uh, he's worked really hard. And I, I knew after semester – um, in, in December, January, he started to move a lot better. And I knew uh, this semester he would, he would have some good basketball in him, and he'll just get better from here. Scott, you said the biggest thing coming into this game was going to be that turnover battle. You guys ended up winning that uh, by six. How big was the defensive effort from your team today in forcing those turnovers? Well, I think, I think we fed off the crowd's energy. And, I mean, when you play three out of four on the road, you're a little tired. And, <laughs> It's, it's Big Monday, which is is coming off Saturday. It's a quick turnaround. I thought the crowd uh, uh, was tremendous, and that really helped us have the intensity we needed. And I mean, both teams were 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 making it tough, switching everything, and um, we did a great job uh, uh, identifying opportunities to drive. And our guards have gotten a lot better at that uh, uh, since the beginning of the year. But definitely you got to get the crowd involved and uh, there's nothing worse than having a great crowd and never get them involved so uh, I thought that the start was important Scott, you mentioned a while ago that rebounding was something that you need to emphasize you've only been out rebounding one in your eight to eight 12 games you've played so far what's the play? uh, players uh, uh, buying in um, and really competing working hard to get better um, 
John's practiced a little bit too, and his physicality makes everybody compete a little bit harder. Uh, if you're not blocking out, he'll knock you over. <laughs> Yeah, they did a good job at it too. Um, did it change the way you approach offense when you uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you're switching everything, then you're then you're more taking advantage of matchups and um our guards have gotten better at it. We need to still keep improving at it. Um but that that, that was something that uh uh we knew they would do some of it. Obviously not that much, but the way we started um we're the exact same way. We're going to change if something's not working. And you guys are now the last four years, four and three against them. And for them to come in and, and change something they don't always do, just to see that, like, so you does it feel like, okay, that means something. I mean, obviously, you just got one last year and stuff all that. Mm -hmm. But to, like, have that respect that they're going to, you know, try to change it up for you. No, nah, I, 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 I know Bill's going to do whatever it takes to win. Doesn't matter who they're playing, and he's a great coach, and that's why uh, you got to beat them. And um, no matter who he's playing, he, he's going to he'll put them in positions to be successful. And again, it's really gratifying when you do win because you know you've you've had to earn it. Scott, how big was Jalen? Huge. Uh, he's been great. Uh, he's put in a lot of work, but his offensive rebounding, um, taking care of the basketball. I mean, he had nine boards tonight, 11 and nine. His efficiency shooting, three for six. He makes free throws, three assists, one turnover. We get three assists, one turnover every game out of him. I mean, he's a low turnover guy, but the three assists was great too. Scott, uh, it seems like you guys are figuring out different ways to win. Does it, does it seem that way to you? It's not the same way. Every yeah, and, 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 the, and the Big 12 teams are too good. Coaches are too good. Players are too good. And it's hard to have – on nights every night, and everybody's got defensive schemes to shut down different people. So, and everyone's got some elite defenders, and you need other people to step up. I thought LJ really gave us a great lift first half, and uh, he got some good looks. Um, credit his teammates getting them open and finding them, but then he made some tough shots and tough plays too. Uh, Scott, in the first half, Langston stopped that lob attempt by KU. What was kind of working for him there that he sniffed out that play and stopped it? We just want him to be active. <laughs> so I think, I, I mean, Langston's a great athlete uh, and his explosivity and um, his his motor's been able to get a lot better uh, after the first couple weeks in the season. Um, I mean, for a while there, he just wasn't moving real well. And now he's 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 getting a lot more uh, um, athletic. And he has, he, as you saw in his drives, he can, he can finish, he can elevate. Um, and and we need that because he's a bigger guard for us. Scott, it's the same thing. You're not talking top ten Kansas team at home, and the students don't feel the need to come to Stork. What does that say about where this program? Is? Yeah, we. I don't know what we, what it would take to get a Stork or a storming of the court now, because um, I mean, you win 23 in a row, 19 in a row, 21 in a row, been ranked number one. So I mean, I think I think our students have helped with all of that, so they deserve a lot of credit. And we're very thankful for that. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, our players have done a great job in establishing a winning tradition. Scott, when Kansas took their home game there early in the second half, you guys responded 12-3-1. Mm -hmm. Langston started it with a three-point play that helped you kind of push that just to answer. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought that was big. Our bench outscoring them 13-2. to two, And our bench had, uh, is, is getting better and better. And uh, you need to have that. I mean, you look at the last couple of years, I mean, Shoot, last year we had LJ on the bench, Jeremy Sohan on the bench, and Jonathan Chamachacha on the bench. So, like, as a coach, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, let's go. I mean, that's that's a great bench. So um, we're, we're, we're developing that rotation again in depth, which is great. Scott, Kansas had just six fast break points. Was that a big emphasis for you this game? Yeah, it's an emphasis every game for us, but uh, we we're, were better at it today. Yeah, I thought uh, uh, his stat line doesn't show a lot, but the, the big number it shows is plus 11. And uh, in 26 minutes, um, that's the biggest thing that stands out. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about, winning. And Scott, it looked like you and you all were pressing some tonight. It gave KU a little bit of trouble. What was effective when you pressed KU tonight? I, I think just early on, maybe they were a little rattled, and then, then we uh, 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 backed out of it. It's, it's, uh, 
I mean, in big Monday games, you don't want to give up easy ones, and uh, they schematically they're always going to put their guys in position to 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 break stuff, and then you don't want to give up a three. So um, we pick and choose our times. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we played better. I mean, I mean, we had breath, and the sun came up today, so naturally it was better than Saturday. So, so, uh, uh, but I, I, I actually, I thought we didn't play poorly. I thought we played poorly, uh, scouting report and defensively early. Then after that, I thought we, then when the game settled down, I thought we were much better. And, and uh, but give them credit; their guards are so good. You know, they got 33 in the first half. And of course, Cryer got 19 of them, but but uh, uh, they were so good, and they made some hard shots, and you know we we didn't we didn't perform as well. But but at, at the I don't know when we took the lead about the 15, 14 minute mark, you know we played pretty well up until that point, and and then they went on a run right after that. So that was pretty much uh, uh, you know the biggest difference, and then we were never able to catch up. But I didn't think we played bad. I just didn't think we rebounded very well. You know, Kenitra, I'm not sure we did a lot. You know, the tendency for, with offensive teams that play uh, 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 and shoot a lot of uh, threes and things like that, when they have a, when they get a lead, sometimes uh, they play a little slower, and sometimes that makes the defense look better than what it actually is. And I, I think the second half, I don't think Baylor played with the same speed offensively as we did, as they did the first half when the game was starting. And now that could be us, but it was also probably them playing a little bit more conservative, uh, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, it was better. We, we just didn't rebound the basketball. You know, when you're switching that much and they're that small and, and, and uh, you know, got to be able to fight on the glass. And, and uh, you know, I don't know exactly, but, but it seemed like to me uh, Bridges more so than anybody else, you know, did a great job on the offensive glass. We are, uh, well, primarily because uh, they run really good stuff, and if, if if you really study their stuff, they do a great job of moving the MIG around. We call that our most important guy, and and uh, uh, moving him around, and that's something that we've really struggled on. And I actually thought KJ could defend and switch on Flagler and and Cryer. So so that that was the decision we made. I don't think it had anything to do with the outcome. Uh, but certainly uh, uh, they didn't hurt us on many things that they hurt other people on because we did switch five. Their players were just better offensively than we were individually defensively. Wiggles, that's now three straight losses for you guys here at the Gerald Tournament. Obviously, you guys have pretty good home court advantage, too. What makes it so difficult about Trump Arena? Uh, to be real candid with you, the best home courts have the best players playing on it, and Baylor's had really good players. So it's, it's not a – it's not uh, uh, anything other than that. You know, uh, uh, you know, we didn't win at home the last time we played, but we've got a pretty good record at home ourselves because we've had really good players playing there. And, and, and the atmosphere obviously helps too, but, but uh, they've got really good guys. Bill, previous three years of split with him, um, is, is it starting to feel like every year it's just when you guys reach off, it's a game rival, like, I don't know if I want to call it rivalry, but um, when, you, when, you talk, when you play the matchup against Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we won the last two national championships, and the year before that, we were both one seats when the when the when the season got called off. So, I think you can make a case that that uh, uh, Baylor is 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 big on everyone's schedule, uh, but certainly on ours as well. Bill, five for nineteen. No, I, th I thought I thought we didn't get a lot of good looks, so so, uh, uh, but we drove the ball and got to the hole more. So they they they, they took Grady and and Jalen away behind the arc pretty well. I thought. I thought he played well. You know, offensively he saw the ball go in the basket, not really from deep, but but he drove it better and, and did some good things without question. It, it, it was it was, you know, probably his best offensive game that he's had in the last. You know, a couple of weeks. So I thought he did fine. Seeing this uh, weigh on your guys or, or exhaust them a little bit, uh, the, the slow starts, digging holes, things like that. Are you, are you well, to when uh, 
Well, it's three games in a row. Uh, it was probably longer than more than that, maybe. So, so uh, yeah, I, I think uh, uh, I, I think that we can certainly be better in that in that uh, area. But but I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, the way that K State played the first ten minutes, the way TCU played the first ten minutes, and the way Baylor played the first ten minutes, uh, if we'd have played really well, we would still been behind. Uh, those three teams played great. I mean, Baylor made everything they looked at tonight to start, and, and, and you know, it felt like they were four of their first five from three. I don't know, maybe four of their first six or whatever. And, and so, uh, yeah, give them credit on that. Uh, but, yeah, it, 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 it's when, when, when you, you know, uh, Brad Livingstone and, and, and the president, you know, we, 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 we all went to Oklahoma State, and wrestling is big at Oklahoma State. Okay, and you know when when you're when you're on on top and you can get riding time, it takes twice as much energy if you're the low man in wrestling as it does playing with the lead and riding time. That's exactly the way basketball is too. So 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 and and that's a great analogy if you guys want to write it down. So so but 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 the thing about it is when 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 you're behind, it takes more energy. Everything's magnified. It, it, it takes it takes uh, more effort. And when you're playing uh, with when you're playing with the lead, obviously you're looser. Uh, uh, everything's not life or death. And 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 I've always learned that. I always thought that at wrestling. You know, watching those guys at Oklahoma State. Uh, uh, how it's so exhausting it is over a course of time. You can you can definitely wear your opponent out that way. So big picture, you lost three in a row, and you have to go play Kentucky for a big Oscar and everybody. How how you approach the upcoming days of practice? And how do you perceive your team responding? G guys, uh, uh, there is there is time to be uh, uh, reactive in in a in a negative way uh, if your team's not doing well. This is not one of our times. The, 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 I mean, we have gotten beat, and granted, we got beat to a team that was projected to win the league tonight that's really good. And they went through the same crap we're going through right now. We got beat by a team that's fifth in the country or right now, uh, at their place by one, and we got beat at home that could have beat anybody in the country Saturday. So, so our league is that good. Uh, uh, it's going. It's, it's going to be a grind. Our, our our team isn't talented enough that that we can be disappointed when when teams of equal talent uh, play better than us and, and and get frustrated with it. We 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 don't have as much margin for error as we've had in years past, and that's 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 okay. But you don't have quite as much margin for error, and the other teams in the league are a lot better. It makes it tough. So, you know, uh, the difference in in in, in uh, in our league, and then in past, there's just not games that you can look to say, like, we can get well here. I mean, there's none of those games. So I, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 uh, I've, I've got to take a different approach and understand that hey, it's, it, it's, it's a marathon. It's, it's, it's not a, it's not a uh, immediate reaction because you could react immediately to in this league and, and, and you'll have nine other teams go through the exact same thing at some point in time during the season. So. What, what, do you, what do you make of DeJuan's last few offensive games? Yeah, he hasn't been as good. You know, he has – and he knows it. I mean, we talked about it after the game. He hasn't been as good. Uh, uh, I think people are keeping him out of the lane. Uh, I don't think he's got – he's getting near as many opportunities to create for others. But, uh, uh, you know, they're the second half. You know, he probably is fatigued. You know, he doesn't usually turn it over, and he had a couple of uh, bad turnovers the second half. But that's, that's probably as much as anything. Right, yeah, it was huge. Um, uh, first off, you know, that was a good Baylor team. Uh, it was another Big 12 battle, um, you know, down the stretch. You know, it was a game of runs for sure. We knew they made a, a big run. Uh, we tried to stay even kill and make our run. And, uh, you know, tonight we, we played it to the wire, and uh, it didn't work out in our favor, though. For both of you guys, how, how difficult is it right now to stay in games and, and give yourselves a chance? You guys are finding ways to do that, obviously not finishing right now. But how mm -hmm. difficult is it to just keep staying in these games? I think just the most important thing really is just, you know, not focus on what, you know, just happened. And for us, those are the last two games. But, I mean, yeah, it is difficult when, you know, you're playing in a league like this and every team is, there's no give me games and every team's a battle. So, um, you know, yeah, hats off to them. And, you know, i got to figure out how to bounce back. Kevin, is it, is it exhausting mentally when you're 
to start like that and just trying to play uphill the rest of the way? Oh, yeah. When you dig yourself a hole early, it's definitely hard to, you know, you always want to be the one up. Um, but, you know, uh, you're going to have to win games like that down the stretch um, in this league and beyond that in March Madness. So, um, you know, we're just building on it. You know, look at the tape, learn from it, and uh, be ready for the next one. You guys switch five tonight. Usually it's just you know, switch forward unless it's like late in the clock. Um, what was the adjustment like to, to play like that? And then also, uh, did you feel like it made it extra tough on the glass at all? That uh, yeah, we uh, we switched five tonight. Um, went with that route. We do that occasionally, sometimes even when we have KJ in. Um, yeah, and of course, um, has off to like you know Flo and, and guys like that when we we're switching down there, battling with them and boxing out. Um, you know, when we we're trying to box out, we, he got some like some calls on us. Uh, you know, boxing him out, and that definitely affected the rebound a little bit. But we all got to do a better job at group rebounding, including myself, of you know coming down and, and cleaning up the defensive glass for sure. When they're not falling, um, I don't know. I I don't want to say it's putting too much pressure. It's just, um, you know, like I always say when you know I'm talking about shooting and if things aren't falling, it's just you know keeping a short term memory. But I feel like that's what we just need to keep on doing as a team. And you know, whatever happens, we get back on the defensive side and you know try to get it back. Because there's a couple of times we made a few mistakes and um, we got guys you know telling each other you know forget about it and just you know bounce back and um, that's what we just kept trying to do. Kevin, how do you grade the defense? Um, we definitely got to clean up our switching, uh, you know, talking, um, you know, being in a road game, um, you know, it gets loud in there at times on the defensive end. We just got to communicate better. But uh, I think we competed hard in the second half. Uh, first half, we messed up a couple of things. But, you know, we're going to look at the film again and, and get back to it. Uh, he's doing great. Um, I know it's hard as a freshman. I remember my freshman year um, in the Big 12, it was rough on me. Um, but he's doing a great job. You know, he's getting the best defender every night out there, chasing him around and stuff. So um, I think he's doing an excellent job, and he's keeping a level head, and, and he's competing on both ends of the floor. Um, yeah, like he said, I'm, you know, the big thing is just, you know, keeping a level, yeah, level headed and um, just knowing, yeah, on the defense side, I might be face guarding, but um, that's just like stuff we got to figure out. There's always going to be you know, something we can, you know, um, do something differently. And whether it be, you know, face guarding and, you know, getting other guys open, just driving, whatever it may be. And um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, get back home and figure this out and get back to it. What's, what's the thought process for you, Grady, when you come back in with the two fouls? Um, you know, continue to play aggressive, but just know that we are, you know, playing away. And, you know, the refs, you know, they're calling their game. They're doing their best and we're doing our best. But um, kind of just adjust to the officiating. Um, that's just kind of where I was. Does it, does it take away some of your aggressiveness, having that kind of in the back of your mind? Um, yeah, I mean, in a way of I might, you know, go try to contest something I may not if I'm, you know, in foul trouble. But at the same time, it's just being a lot more smart. Than the smart. What do you think of Cryer in the first half? Uh, yeah, he had some huge shots. Um, he was, um, you know, scoring the ball in a variety of ways, getting to the hole, um, shooting a three ball. So he played a really good game in that first half. He did a really good job. Yeah, that's my boy. Um, you know, kind of at the start of the game, we were kind of you know chirping back and forth, but um, yeah, he's a you know great player, and it's gonna be fun later on the road. Kevin, what do you do now? You're going to Kentucky on Saturday. You lost three in a row. How does the team get into it mentally? Uh, get back to work. That's all you can do. Um, short term memory. That's what Coach Self is preaching us. Short term memory. Um, learn from it. Um, you know, have a great week of preparation and go out there and, and compete. Um, really just trying to just just affect winning and trying to just make the hustle plays. Um, you know, that was a big emphasis for all of us. We all, we all knew we had to crash the glass. Um, they had some big bodies down there trying to, you know, bang around. And really, I was just trying to go get the ball, um, just trying to do what I can. All right, folks. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur.